Her artworks are sold right around the world, fetching up to $20,000 a painting. And she usually paints two or three a day. Now that's big money, but Emily has pretty simple tastes. She gives a lot of the money away. She's been known to buy a car a day to give to friends. Yep, a car a day. Howard Gipps with this fascinating lady. She's one of the great artists of our time. Somehow or other, it works. And we really can't explain how. The classic mark of the Emily's genius is the clouds of colour she comes up with. Hundreds of kilometres to the northeast of Alice Springs, Emily and Worry has started a revolution with these strokes. Much of her life is a mystery to the art world. Even she doesn't know how old she is, though she must be in her 80s. She doesn't speak English, and she'd never painted till a few years ago. But Emily may already be Australia's highest paid artist. Well, I've heard people say she's the black Matisse. Yeah, the classic Emily is when she plays with colour, and the genius comes out in the, the use of colour and the clouds of dots and the movement it creates in the painting. But it's all in the eye of the beholder. The style is neither European nor Aboriginal, but a unique synthesis of both. Highbrow critics have likened her to a bewildering array of great Western artists, Matisse, Monet, Renoir, even Jackson Pollock. But there are still elements of Aboriginal art in every work. This is an expression of, of her uh, feeling of the yam uh, in abstract form. So, I mean, any art critic who was worth his oats would come and look at this and say, this is a great painting? I think so, yes. This one is destined for a great Australian gallery. This smaller work, which she completed in an hour, will sell for around $10,000. And this one? Well, I'm a bit worried about that one. Why I, uh, is that, huh? Well, she has used a, a bigger brush, and uh, I just don't think it works as well. Don and Janet Holt of Delmore Station are her mentors. Emily's home is next door on Utopia Station, but she does most of her painting around the Holt's homestead. Her speed is astonishing, and three or four works may be finished every day. Each will fetch up to $10,000. Goodbye. <laughs> it was a real pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I, I'm very, very honoured to have made your acquaintance. Yeah. Bye bye, Emily. Goodbye. Bye. This Swiss VIP, who declines to be named, lives in Canberra. He and his wife flew in to pick up an Emily for their collection and meet the creator. Did you only buy one, sir? Oh, no, I have a number. <laughs> and that, that feeling that I derive, that I get from her paintings, fills me uh, with uh, joy and intellectual satisfaction. Is this dry time? Yeah. Or summertime? Yeah. Which one? This one, here. Yeah. Is it uh, rain time or drought time? Oh, dead day. Pardon? Water. Water. Mm -hmm. After rain? Yeah, rain. Yeah, right. Bring them up. Yeah, yeah. At her age, this fighting instinct is still in her. She will doggedly, you know, continue working regardless of a good advice to ease up. You're an old lady now, you should be slowing down. She ignores it. Alongside her, friends and relatives paint their dot and motif work. It sells well, but for much lower prices. To keep the team supplied with a never-ending stream of raw materials, the property's shop stocks shelves of professional art supplies and two station workers staple and prime all day long using the best Dutch canvas. This is called white on canvas. How many of these will you do today? Um, well, it depends how busy the artist keep us. There's yeah. a complete yeah. unknown quantity. Feels like the size of a tennis court in all. Anyway, you finished with this one. You want to... Yeah, Benny. Yeah. OK. Yeah, put him here. OK, I put him up there. Up to 1989, she'd never touched acrylic paint nor a brush. The strength in her hands and arms, which now allows her to work all day, comes from her traditional lifestyle, gathering food and preparing it. Apart from the bottled water, her diet hasn't changed much. Woman drug and boy uh, and boys. Now try a bit? Yeah. Try. What do you little do? Just, little bit. Just a little bit of that. Wow, that's nice. That's one meat. Mm. That's very good. Quite that's like um 
like lizard. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> that is great. She is an inspiration to the, these people here. She certainly is proving to them they can do something and uh, produce and be able to help the community. She enjoys giving away money to people. I don't know who she gives it to, but uh, she certainly uh, gives it away. It's possible that up to 80 members of her community now enjoy this generosity. After the city galleries and Don and Janet have taken their substantial commissions, it becomes impossible to calculate how much money goes to the relatives. But it could be upwards of half a million dollars a year. It may also be several times that. Emily uh, would buy a car a day sometimes and give it away. She may drive a car for three days and give it away and buy another one. And uh, <laughs> she quite often uh, has three or four cars a week. Uh, friends of hers don't wash their clothes, they just get new ones. I suppose you could say she's so busy painting she hasn't got time to do the washing. <laughs> Last year, one particular piece fetched $70,000, but her styles evolve so rapidly, the market is continuously adjusting to the new ones. It's uh, the, the unknown factor the, uh, and the creativity. The, the, she never stands still. She's always moving on. Where does it all come from? I don't think anybody knows. It's, uh, she's uh, a one-off. She's not uh, your average person. She's uh, quite uh, very much an individual. She's become not only nationally but also internationally acclaimed and I think her work has tremendous visual power and it will be sustained by that. Curator of Aboriginal art for the Northern Territories Gallery, Margie West, believes Emily is something of a national living treasure. As to the suggestion that the pressure on Emily to produce amounts to exploitation, she disagrees. She's a very intelligent and a very smart woman. I don't think that Emily would allow herself to be exploited if she didn't want to be. You see the red come up in the middle? It's there. You're starting to see something really fire now. Another classic Emily. But how many more will there be before the art world discusses her legacy? No? No. Yeah. What are you have a rest now. <laughs> well, she should show to all Aboriginal Australians that you can make something of yourself. I really think that she has a universal meaning. You know, a lot of people retire at 65 and give up the ghost and look what she's done. Howard Gibson with that Believe It or Not report.